Good morning, and welcome to Good News Buoy. I'm your host, Darius A. Stanton, and I have my partner, my partner in comedy, not in crime, <laughs> but in rhyme. That's right. Chris Thomas, the original mayor of Rap City, and now here as the host of Good Morning, Good News Buoy, and the Comedy Corner, Corner Extra. Extra. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Thomas, and thank you, Darius A. Stanton. And today we got a very, very special show from a good friend of mine that, believe it or not, many years ago, she used to tell me she was a songwriter. And I, I didn't put it all together until several years ago. And she's not only a songwriter, Darius, she's a hit songwriter. A hit songwriter. I'm talking about from certain songs like Sideshow by Blue Magic, Love Won't Let Me Wait, Love J Major won't Harris. Let me wait. And here she is, Miss Vinnie Barrett. Welcome to the show. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me to the show. And the reason we have these here is because she's an award winner also. So other than selling millions and millions of records, she also has been presented with awards for her achievements. So tell us about some of the, well, first of all, I'm just so excited, you know, uh, as they say, pretty as a picture. Thank you so much <laughs> for being a part of the Good News Buoy Comedy Extra with Chris Thomas. Uh, Miss Vinnie Bennett, I'm excited, you know, because you're a star and you have written music that has made people's hearts smile. I mean, you got the kind of music that when they hear, love won't let me wait, <laughs> You get, I mean, people are like, turn, shh, shh, turn that up, turn that up. You know, uh, the kind of music that, of course, I know you heard it all the time. Babies are made, right. and loves are made, right. makeups are made, you know, just a whole lot of maids. You know? <laughs> and so uh, it's an honor to have you on the show. So thank you so much for taking your time and coming by and being a part of, of our show this morning. Thank you. It's an honor for you to invite me to the show, and uh, it's just amazing to hear so many acclimates when I'm just a hardworking songwriter. <laughs> I know that's right. So tell us about, you know, you, tell us about some of your hits, you know, um, and how they, how you came about to just becoming a songwriter. You know, there are tons of people out there that still, you know, want to be songwriters, have songs written, poems, you know, albums that they've already done. How, how did you get into songwriting? Well, I used to uh, write poems when I started out at uh, 18, and I had my own band in Washington, D.C., Vinnie Barrett and the Unlimits. Oh. And, and I heard that beautiful voice <laughs> as we were, you were sitting out in the audience. <laughs> I, I heard that tone. I don't know if you're going to sing for us today. I was I hoping we could come up with some kind of, you know, duet, and I'd be glad to work with you because, you know, then I... I have somebody to make sure our publisher got taken right. care of because she's a songwriter and a publisher, so yes. that'd be a, 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 a dynamic hit. But the crazy thing is, how do you write for love? Do you write it be of your love experience, or how do you write love for other people to relate to the song that you're writing for the group? There are all kinds of ways. Um, first, I write for love for myself. Okay. And then I can pick up. Uh, languages and experiences from other people and write from those experiences. Mm. So, you know, you get to have various ways of communicating music to the public. Those hits, were they 70s songs? Yes, they were. So the 70s were, was a, a re-experience of things that black people were able to do. It was a love generation, it the was. 70s, yeah, the, the decade of love. Superfly. Ah, oh, everybody. <laughs> so, so, so who, what inspired you? You went from singing yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. I went from uh, singing. And then in the, so how did you make the transition from singing with your own band, uh, with that beautiful voice you had, and then to start writing for others? How did that transition come about? Well, I went from uh, my own band to uh, an entertainer by the name of Phil Flowers, and he was a in-town singer. And right, no Phil. Yeah, so we formed a, a girls group. Okay. And we went and auditioned for him. And we did backup for him, and we backed up Roberta Flack okay. and, and various artists around town. We went to New York even and recorded a song called uh, Down in the Boondocks. Mm. So coming home from New York, I remember very vividly that I decided to be a songwriter on the bus home. Wow. You know what else is crazy? Because she's part of that Motown Philly uh, crew, too. Uh, uh, Gamble and Huff. Yes. 
Wow. So you worked <laughs> with Gambling Huff? Well, that's where I decided to go. Okay. When, uh, when Cowboys to Girls came out and uh, Didn't I Blow Your Mind, Howard Theater was jumping. Mm -hmm. And so I heard about uh, Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff. And I said, I'm going to get in my car and go to Philly. And I did. I had a purple Cadillac <laughs> convertible. You were stylish then. <laughs> You've been stylish. I was doing prints. A purple then. convertible Cadillac. I know, Chevrolet. Oh, Chevrolet. <laughs> she said she was doing Prince, but did you know she actually, and we'll get to that later on in the show, she wrote a song for Prince, and he did record it before he passed away. Mm. Yes, he did. Her daughter was uh, a dancer with Prince. Yes, for three years. Wow. So tell us about, so you, 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 got, you got in the car, went up to Gambling Huff, and... I got in the car and drove to Philadelphia, broke down on the Schuylkill Expressway, <laughs> And who should pull up behind me to see why a DC plate was broken down was Norman Harris and Alan Felder. Wow. Whoa. Uh -huh. And they walked up to me and they said, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm, I'm a songwriter. I'm, I'm going to see somebody. I'm a songwriter. <laughs> I was very bold. I write hits. Yeah, right. That's what you did. Did I you say that? I write <laughs> hits. <laughs> I <didn't> <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. But um, uh, they said, well, who are you going to see? And I said, Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff. And uh, they said, well, we work for them. And I said, you know, what are your names? And when they told me their names, Norman Harris and Alan Felder, I said, I know you. I've seen your name on the records. You're, you're MFSB. Right. You're, and you're the leader. And he said, okay, well, we're going to get you hauled off. We're Look at God. I tell Look, you. You see, now, I, 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 I just wrote a, a post today that talked about pushing up. It's a push-up tip. And, you know, you just got to push. You got to be bold for good. Yes, you right. do. You got to step out there and do it. You can't wait on it. You can't, yeah, can't think for about somebody it. somebody else. You can't doubt yourself. You just got to step out there and yeah. step into your own shoes. Sure. You so, they, so you ended up being picked up, a damsel in distress, uh, who said, I'm a songwriter, bold, and then went on. And so you started to then, that just started your career in songwriting. It started. Uh, we, uh, they had my car hauled away to be repaired, and they took me in their car to the Gambling Huff office, which was the Schubert Theater building at the time on South Broad. Mm. But how does anyone know once you got into the office and Kenny and, and Gamble. Yeah, well, they, when I got in. How, and then you presented some I of your writing? I played my little guitar. Okay. Oh, so you do play guitar? I play guitar. Okay. And I sung them a little song. And, you know, um, country and western was very big in those days. And, you know, I had a country and western song and I played it for him. And he says, well, we don't, we don't record those kind of yeah. songs. <laughs> So he said, but I'll tell you what, you're bold to come here, you know, and I, and I was about 19 and a half then. Mm -hmm. And they said, stick around, come to the studio, you have free access, you can come in and out as you want. Wow. Just, just notify the desk when you come in at Sigma Sound Studios, and uh, you'll be our guest. And but the first hit, which, which was the first hit? The first hit was, um, I Just Don't Want to Be Lonely. Mm. Okay. okay, and, and who's, who sang that song? Who was that? Well, the first artist to do that was Ron, Ronnie Dyson. Dyson, right. right. Okay. And it was produced by Tom Bell, okay. which was a partner of Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff. Mm -hmm. and, um, and who made it famous? With the Soul well, Train? Or the main ingredient made it famous. <laughs> <laughs> made it but we thought I say Soul Train because that was one of the only outlets, yeah, other than radio, right? That people got to hear the artists live on television, and they for did for the first time. Yes, they did. So, how many of your songs did you ever hear? On, what did it feel like to hear your song on Soul Train? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and just let people know, she's from HU. Howard University, and yeah. she is a Maryland resident. Yes, I am. So. so um, so main ingredient, that was, a, that, that was the first big hit. And what was the next one? The next one was a song called Sideshow. Let mm. the Sideshow begin. That's it. Blue Magic. Blue Magic. Blue Magic. Come on. So we might be able to let the side Sideshow begin. begin. Harry, Harry, step right on in. 
Can't afford to pass it by. Guaranteed to make you cry. Harry, Harry, <laughs> step right up. Oh man, that was powerful how she integrated that. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> right, right. I was listening to a song. Um, was it Jill Scott that did something similar where she integrated? Love Jill. She integrated uh, uh, something very similar to what you did. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of paved the way. But you know what? Maybe we need to see the video. Hey, the sideshow. So That's we'll right. take a moment and listen to Blue Magic, and you'll get a chance to check it out right here on Good News Buoy right. with none other than the writer, the publisher of this song. Arranger. Arranger. Wow, Arranger, because she played the guitar. That's she right. Could, Vinnie Barrett. Vinnie Barrett. Here it is, Blue Magic, sideshow. <laughs> You'll see that he is sad. He hurts so bad. So bad, so bad. See the girl who has lost the only love she ever had. There's got to be no sad or shall to see. Good news, Bowie. We got some good music, Bowie. <laughs> With Prince George's County, DC's own Benny Barrett and our very Barrett. own Barrett. Well, yeah, quite Benny Barrett. We got <laughs> but that's how it, that's how it's written. But it's it's uh, said Barrett. Barrett. That's right. <laughs> and this is the uh, comedy extra. You know, here with our good friend and host, co-host, Chris Thomas. Comedy corner extra. I'm just telling you, me and Darius been friends for so long. That's right. That's we just right. be having fun, everybody. Yeah. Oh man, I just, I, Chris, I just want to thank you for bringing so many stars to the Good News Bowie stage, and we just heard a classic, a hit, and so to, let's keep the hits rolling. Well, with me, everybody shines. I know that's <laughs> right, and isn't she shining? That's right, everybody shines. As a matter of fact, speaking of shining, there's another song by Major Harris. Yes. Uh, we're going to just keep this rolling, you know, before we take the break so people can just get in the mood and get all pumped up. And you might have to call in from work today or, <laughs> or call and say, honey, come on home. That's right. <laughs> because you did a song with Major Harris. And tell us, tell us about this song. Uh, well, uh, that song was written. And before it was written, I didn't. Did he ask you to write the song? No, he didn't. Uh, I met him later. Okay. Uh, Bobby Eli, okay. who was my partner at the time, uh, we wrote the song, and um, and then Major came on the scene. Was that it one of his biggest hits? That was that was the only hit. See? That he wow. ever had. See? Yes. You created a one-hit wonder. One-hit wonder. And a lot of them have lived for the, for their whole life off of just one hit. Yes, and he did. Uh, as a matter of fact, he joined the Delphonics. Very, very famous group after right. that and uh, stayed with them until he passed. Oh, wow. Yes. So you really created that, that hit. You created a, a, a legacy inside of a legacy. Oh. Right. You can't beat the Delphonics. Enough of talking. Let's get to the video. So, so, so introduce this song for us. <laughs> this song is called Love Won't Let Me Wait. Is, it, is this Major's version? That's right. Okay, That's right. by Major Harris. This is Love, Love Won't, won't let, me wait. let Me Wait. Me wait, oh, please tell me yes, and don't say no, honey, not tonight. I need to have you next to me. Not one more minute, baby, 
So I'd love to finish the rest of this show, but I'm going to tell you, I got to go <laughs> because love won't let me wait. Wow, thank you so much for creating that. So, I mean. She's still writing. Yes, cur wow. currently writing. And, and tell about the song with Prince, the late, great Prince. Oh, you going to do Prince God. first or Luther? You going to talk about Prince? Well, I mean, Prince is gone. Luther is gone. I actually toured with both of those guys. Wow. Oh, wow. But Prince was recently. Yes. And so you can talk to her about her awards that she has received for Outstanding. Well, these awards are from Be There magazine. And the owner is Russell Price Jr., who does a lot of great things around town. He's had books out. Uh, he's had television shows, um, and he chooses every year from the, f this was the first one and this was the second one, and I'm supposed to get a third one. Uh, Congratulations. And, I, and I, I, I want to just say I love and appreciate Russell because he is the only person who's ever uh, acknowledged, acknowledged me uh -huh. as uh, DC's uh, songwriter, and there's not, there's not too many... Uh, songwriters that came out of DC, so I really appreciate Russell Price. And a lot of people didn't know. No. Well, I appreciate you know you sharing that, and congratulations. Thank you. Um, I, my daughter turned me on to a songwriter. I want you to want me. Oh yeah. Leon Ware is awesome. who I'm talking oh, about. Oh yes. Right. Yes. Another songwriter, uh, oh. and a legend. I mean, his music. He started writing, but so tell us about working with Prince and, and that experience. Well. Um, I worked very hard to get my daughter in to uh, see him. She's she's a dancer. Okay. She's an actress, singer, and what's uh, her name? Camila Barrett. Camila Barrett. Camila. Pretty as a butterfly. Of course, <laughs> the only way it could be. Apples don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> well, he was playing at the uh, Cap Center August the first, nineteen ninety seven. Wow. And she finally got a chance to audition for him and in front of, I know it was 10,000 people there. And uh, that was the beginning the beginning mm -hmm. of everything. Uh, he came to the house, brought the tour bus to the house. He was just so excited to Brought the tour bus to the house? Brought mm -hmm. the tour bus right to the house. I know and that's right. Lived. And this is basically when he had a controversy? Yes. Well, that was the yes. first album? Mm -hmm. Wow. That was, jam that was the jam of the year. Hey, I'm going to tell you what's so Concert. crazy. Uh, so you know my, man my ex-manager. Tiger Flower, G Street Express. And Tina Marie was supposed to be the headliner with Prince at the Warner Theater. Guess what? She caught laryngitis. And mm. guess who had to fill in for the very first time? A little young kid who didn't know too much about comedy other than I could do impressions. Me. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> with Prince. This is when he had the little long lid tarts on. Yes. Be the, ready, huh? And jumped off the speakers. Be ready. There is. We had to be there. Man, awesome. congratulations, brother. I'm telling awesome. legends. It was a long this time news ago. Buoy, we just yes. surrounded by so much talent, yeah. so much energy. And you know the greatest thing? Good people. Yes. You know? Very really good people. Good, good people. So tell us about the song you did for Luther. Well, that, that was Love Won't Let Me Wait, the cover. The cover. Uh, oh, wow. And it, it did tremendous. Uh, when, I, when I met him after he cut it, he said, uh, you, you're about to be very famous. And I said, well, I'm glad. <laughs> I know, that's right. It was him, you know. And, sure. and to, for Luther to cover your song is just the top of the line it's of amazing of it was. in yeah. the music business, sure. you know. And that song, Love Won't Let Me Wait, has gone on to be covered by over 45 artists. Wow. But tell me, how many what? records or CDs now have it, has it actually sold? No. I'm noticing, I know it's in... Over, shoot, it's billions. over 10 million. Yeah, yeah. So well, if it's billions. Sideshow, too. Wow. I just don't want to be lonely, too, as Whoa. well. I was wondering who so that Rolls sold, Royce so, was outside. So what's the numbers <laughs> like so in I, terms of the number of, 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 of record sales that you've had with your song? Oh, my God. I, you know, I don't really know. Mm, but you, you get know. a check every month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can sit home, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and work on some more songs. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, but I, but I have uh, uh, five gold and uh, four platinum mm. and numerous uh, awards from uh, Broadcast Music Incorporated, our airplay. Sure. 
uh, BMI for yes, those who BMI don't know for that. those who don't know. Uh, and we have a few phenomenal performing arts centers here. Yes. At Bowie State University at the yes. Fine Arts and Performing Arts Center. The yes. And then we have uh, over at uh, Prince George's Community College. Right. So we can find, you know, there's a group called Soul in Motion we work with. Mm -hmm. We can find, uh, we did a musical uh, several years ago with a gentleman by the name of Ted Cooper. He was a, a writer a poet, I mean a playwright okay. at Howard University a professor and he did a play called Fantasy. Mm -hmm. It was a musical and we took young people in the daytime, they went to do summer jobs and then in the afternoon they worked, rehearsed the play, learned the play and then we went touring around the city of Annapolis which is where I'm from working out of the mayor's office and we had Junkies Chase, Freddy's Dead, Love Injection, Superfly these were all songs sang by teenagers, and at that time, this was in the early 90s, these were songs from the 70s. So they were 20 years removed from when these songs were birthed. Yes. That sounds like a play, too, Love Won't Let Me Wait. I, it is. It's the name of my book. I'm, I'm okay. writing a book okay. of, of my biology, you know, my biography. Bio, yeah. oh, sure. And uh, it's called Love Won't Let Me Wait because uh, my history of even before I became a songwriter was something to be read mm. you know uh, you know i came from poverty the projects food stamps the, the i mean ghetto where did you, you grow up washington dc where, when you said the projects specifically you want to share southeast washington southeast okay yes. southeast m street south, south Arthur caper yes. <laughs> oh you went to uh, what yes so i just i just so I'm, I'm i'm flabbergasted because i just left a project uh managing that facility which was the Arthur Caper community, yeah. which they now call Capital Quarter, but the folks who grew up there call it Arthur Caper. And I never knew, I mean, I was, I'm from Annapolis, but I traveled around D.C., you know, young, and then, um, but did not know in the history. So you're actually from, do you know the seniors in that community yes. that where the, the building just burned down? Yes. And they're rebuilding it now. Thank God no I'm one glad. was killed. Um, but I was there that day managing the building when all of those seniors were, you know, brought in and from the from the building next door, um, but they would love. Have you gone back and sang or played or performed at all in that area? In that, in that area, uh, we no. got to make that happen. Camila has done shows around uh, okay. town. Okay, I don't think you sing anymore. I mean, you sing probably around the house, but yeah, but I I sing my demos. Okay. Yeah, because like when I was working with Al Johnson, you know, I wrote his Literally song great Tranquility. Al and uh, what about Chuck? Uh, though I didn't sing what with about Chuck. Chuck? <laughs> so tell us about but some I love other. Ch Chuck uh, recorded "Love Won't Let Me Wait." Let's see, Chuck but I've Brown. also written for Nancy Wilson, Johnny Mathis, mm. the Spinners, Look at Me, Billy Paul, mm. Dee Dee Sharp Gamble, mm. Jean Carn, mm. uh, and like I said, Natalie, oh, who, you said somebody else too, Dionne Warwick. Dionne Warwick, yes, I did three songs on her, and recently I'm working with uh, a young lady out of this DMV area called L.A. Young. LA Young. Uh, she's doing the Phyllis Hyman tribute. She's going around doing, ah, okay. and she I've sounds just like I've seen her. Phyllis Hyman. Yeah, yeah, and very talented. That's the young lady they've been telling me about. Yes. And they have one in North Carolina that actually is doing a tribute to um, Shaka Khan. Yes. They have all these groups. Yeah, all these tribute groups. Groups, right. And they have, in fact, they're supposed to be having uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire in town, and they're having a tribute band. Yeah, to I perform. have a cousin, Gene, Gene Simmons, right. who does, uh, yeah, he's, my, he, he, he's a phenomenal music producer. He's been doing uh, that earth, that revitalization of uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah, they've, uh, so which one of your songs sold, sold the most copies? Oh, I would say Love Won't Let oh, Me Oh, they're still selling, though. Yeah. 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 They're still they selling. As a matter wonderful? of fact, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a gentleman in the uh, UK who's putting it out now. Uh, his name is Daryl Grant, and he's putting it out. Are you able to put up a trust, you know, at, you, we all probably going to live for the next hundred years, <laughs> but after, do you have a trust where your music will go to your family and they'll be able to make decisions? Of course. Okay. Yes, yes. And so some, of, some of my uh, music is in the uh, National Black History Museum. The museum. Right. Yeah. Smithsonian right. Museum? Yes. Even the blue piano that Tom Bell had in his office at uh, PIR, Philadelphia International Records, that was the piano that all of us came in 
and would play on and sing for Tom trying to get on the album. Sure. You know? So tell us about what are the, what are the instruments that you, I heard you talk about the guitar. The guitar, that's it. Is that a it. bass or the guitar? Okay. That's just a regular classical guitar. Classical guitar. Electric? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, my son plays all of okay. those, those instruments. So, um, yeah. what's up? What's up for the future? Uh, more writing, my bio, um, touring. Hopefully, I will do a book tour. And don't forget, we're still talking about that show. Uh, yes, and don't say anything <laughs> right. about it because it's, it's so special. That's that, right. That's right. We you don't know, want anybody. We don't want anybody to get, no, get that we're gonna come. Us. You're going to come back to Good News Bowie and on the Comedy Extra, Comedy <laughs> Corner Extra, and share that, right? May I also say I had two grandchildren that uh, one, the first one graduated five years ago. On Bowie. Brandon. Uh -huh. And the second one is graduating this year, Stedman. On Bowie. Oh, wonderful. From Bowie State uh -huh. University. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Congratulations. I got my start at Bowie State University at Upward Bound. Oh, my wow. God. Wow. college. Yes. I, I graduated from D. Lincoln University, but uh, my start mm -hmm. was at Bowie. It helped me to really understand who I was as a leader. Bowie is so special. It really is special. So this uh, guy does so much. And that's why I had, I told him, I said, uh, I got Miss Vinnie Barrett. Oh, I got excited. When he told me and I started going into the music and the catalog and I was like, wow, 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 after one hit after <laughs> another. Uh, so, you know. Because soon we about to do the Rap City 30th yeah. anniversary tribute yeah. on uh, Good News Bowie and the Comedy Corner Extra. Yeah. That's right. We well, may it. I say this before, if Kenny Gamble, Leon Huff, and Tom Bell had not been in Philadelphia, I probably wouldn't have had a career at all. Mm. Because I didn't go to Motown. I went straight to Philly. Motown and, Philly. And Motown Philly, <laughs> but Philly by itself. Because <laughs> right. Philly had his, his, their own love songs, their own lush. Teddy Pendergrass. Oh, everybody. Boys Carol the Melvin Man. and the Blue Notes. So yes. t tell us about, um, it's so important, um, the importance of being able to stop and protect your music which allows you to sit home and write today. Well, yes. Well, first of all, after you write a song, you should definitely have it copywritten. And how did, what's the quick process to be able to just make sure it's a simple thing? That you well, do? it used to be that we would do sheet music, but mm -hmm. nowadays, you know, we go in the studio and we make what is called demos. Okay. And then you take it to the copyright office, okay. you know, Library of Congress, and you get it copyrighted. And uh, if you're going to publish it yourself, you also list yourself as publisher. Mm -hmm. And then you register with BMI for your airplay. Mm -hmm. And then you shop your song. There you go. <laughs> well, you heard it from a star, Miss Vinnie Barrett. Thank you so much Thank for being you. here. Love won't let me wait. Uh, let mean, the side show begin. You know, all of these fabulous songs. <laughs> Make sure, you know, you go out and uh, stay tuned here at Good News Buoy because we're going to stay in touch, you know, with Miss Barrett. We're going to let you know what's going on. We're going to keep you abreast of what's happening. Please feel free to come on back to Comedy Corner Extra anytime and share what's happening. When your book is out, we want to know about it. When the play comes, we want to be a part of it. And right. when we get a chance, you know, I want to audition to do a duet with you. Or maybe I she just, can get uh, Blue Magic in here. I would love to do that. Wow. Hey, let's make it happen. <laughs> There's a play called Love Won't Let Me Wait. Okay. That's out. Okay. okay. Are they playing your music? <laughs> uh, the, a little bit, yeah. Okay. Just a little snippet, yeah. So, you know, uh, we always leave with, you know, Good news, Bowie, and I just want to say, you know, as we close, um, just get out there and do it. Yes. Don't hold back. Yes. Don't wait. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Just mm -hmm. go out and do it. And, uh, again, if you have any good news, share it with us, please. But until then, this is Darius A. Stanton with Chris Thomas, the Comedy Corner Extra on Good News, Bowie, saying go out and make some good news, Bowie. Just don't want to be